going to continue our dirty pour adventure with black and white. This time we're going to add a little bit of glitter there, but some green, a very strong color with the black and white. So we'll see how this works out. Hang on. Howdy, howdy, y'all. This is Claire Lawrence. So I realized from that last pour that I think I have enough resin to pull off uh, a black and white with uh, green, like I was talking about. So why not? Let's go for it. Well, I know this stuff is not that exciting, me putting a clear coat down. But I tell you what, I have found that it really, really helps for moving around the colors. And I find that I don't need as much color mixed up. You still use about the same amount of resin, um, but the color intensity seems to be a lot more. Again, I put too much on there. And now it's like they cleared almost out of range. There we go. I got it. There is a little bit of guessing here when it comes to pouring a clear coat down. Obviously, you can tell with resin, wear a gloved hand, it, it glows. So I'm using Stone Coat Art Coat, which has got a very long working time, which is good because I uh, use it all the time. But it also has uh, UV protection, which is definitely a plus when it comes to creating artwork and stuff. Because you don't want the sun to take away your artwork. That would be awful. But this stuff also, because I use it for uh, trays sometimes and coasters, has a bit of a uh, heat resistance. I think up to either 400 or 450. Don't quote me on that part. But uh, it's pretty pretty significant. They took a, um, a pan of boiling water off the stove and stuck it on the countertop. And it's the same heat resistance from the countertop resin to the art coat. Uh, that's what Mike was talking about on Stone Coat on one of his videos. So that impressed, impressed me quite a bit. Um, and it's also got some scratch resistance on it too. Of course, I don't think anything's scratch proof except for maybe diamonds, but even diamonds can get scratched too if you get it with the right type of tool, probably. Okay, got the clear done. Let me put this guy to the side, reset up the camera, and I'm gonna fill up the dirty pour cup. You guys let me know in the description whether you like seeing how I pour my dirty cups or not, or if it's just a step I should skip the next video or so. So let me know that in the comments if you wouldn't mind. That would be helpful. So I'll be right back. All right, I got my colors all lined up. I've got gold on standby in the background in case I decide I want to do gold. I think it might be just one of those spontaneous moments. Um, actually, I'm kind of thinking it might be interesting to do in between white and black. So at the end of my video, like normal, I'm gonna put uh, a photo saying what colors I used in case you're interested, because some people will ask me, you know, what color was that or what color, you know, was that and who was it from? All right. What I did in my previous video where I did black and white, I had two different types of blacks and two different kinds of whites. I will be honest with you, I kind of put the two whites together and the two blacks together. Um, for this. Yeah, I might do a little sprinkling of gold. Just a tiny bit. Alright, 
Here goes the green, and we're going to do a healthy amount. Because, um, why not? <laughs> do we need any more reason than that? That's a really pretty green. Healthy amount, all right. All right, now I'm gonna put clear resin here that's been mixed in with, uh, or it has some diamond dust mixed in. It doesn't have a huge amount of it. I don't know if you could see that. But enough to add some bling. Uh, the clear might go to the bottom. So I'm gonna kind of zigzag it across the top and see what will happen. finger might be easier. All right, I think I've got enough for this case. I think I'm gonna stop here. Some people will go in and do like a quickie stir with the stick very, very gently. In other words, they're not mixing it up. It's just like a kind of agitating the color flow. Um, but I don't. And that's just me. I find it seems to do better for me in the way I pour, not to mess with it too much. Or at least I like the result. Okay, let me get reset up again. Okay, all done there. Get my chair out of the way. I always like to hit it with the heat gun before I do any colors if there's already resin down there. Get rid of any air bubbles that come to the surface. All right, let's see if you can see any of this. That's what it looks like in the cup. All right, oh, and I just dusted right in the middle. I flipped my fingers and I saw it land off my, take off my fingers. Ah, I can't talk. Come off of my fingers, there we go, and land right in the tray. And I got it. Okay, let's see. A lot of times I'll do like kind of a, a wide S. I think in this case, I'm just gonna do a big, kind of like a G, all right? And I get really, really close and pour slowly. A lot of times I'll drag my cup. Oh, not a lot of green there. All right. Got buried under this layer of black. You can see it a little bit of hint of green there. I've got some still in my cup. So if I wanted to add a little bit of an accent, I could. Hmm. Debate, 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 debate. All right, let me hit it with the heat gun real quick. some green in now so that way when I tilt it it moves with the colors as well I'm kind of thinking yes all right this is not something I've done before as far as before I tilt it change my gloves so I have clean gloves before I handle my tray and tilt it because I don't want to transfer if I can. All right. Gives that chance to settle. Okay. 
just wanted to get rid of the sharp line that was there before I started moving it. All right, here we go. Let's see, we'll get it to move the, the most. That will do it. In this case, encouraging it to move will be in our best interest. I'm gonna do this way. Yeah, let's try that. Wait in camera, yes. Let me see. I have a spot here that's not touching. Okay, got it. So at the same time, I'm leaning this way, but I'm also got a little bit of an angle towards this backside, so it allows it to still move along the edge. I may have to take a few of these pieces outside and get another video of it later on, because this has got quite a bit of shimmer. You can tell it from the, there's a lot of metallic in this green. So it was like a pearl-like shimmer. And then, of course, with the diamond dust in there. And I think even some of the black has a metallic shimmer, too. All right, I think I'm going to do something here. Let's see. This is starting to thin out quite a bit, so it's like I might not have added enough color. I don't want to thin it out too much. Right. I got a little bit left of this. A little bit of a dance between back and forth here. It's like, fill up that gap. And then I could pull it back and take the pressure off that gap and then go towards this edge here. And I knew this would move because of me going around the edge. So it would take off that um, look of just pouring it in. So I'm gonna go a little bit and then I'm gonna back off because I kind of like it being a solid green there. All right. Nope. I'm gonna keep going.
Hmm. Sure's a lot of S movement here from all the tilting and stuff. All right, I'm trying to think of what to do. Might, hmm, I almost wanna do silver with this. I wonder if I should get some of that chrome pen. I think so. Okay, I'm gonna go get my uh, chrome pen so I can paint some lines on here and that might look really interesting. Moto, uh, and it happens to be a, a refill. So for their uh, markers, and it gives a mirror kind of silvery. I mean, it looks like liquid, liquid silver, to be honest with you. I mean, ill. Look at how clear that phone is. And yes, it is that kind of color right there on, the, on my phone. So what I'm going to do is I put some of this onto a paper plate. I took the little cap off. I'm going to put the cap right back on. Um, and I'm going to get a stick of some sort and run it in there and then drag it along the resin lines. And that's the plan. Okay. So like I said, I got some of this uh, refill chrome stuff on a plate. And I'm going to dip, and I grabbed a toothpick because uh, I've only got one wooden skewer in here, a bamboo skewer in here. I need to bring some out from the uh, kitchen. But I need that skewer in case I need to pick up any um, hairs out of my resin. So I'm literally going to be drawing painted lines with this thing in, in the resin. I'm just finding the lines that are already existing from doing the tilt. Let's see if I can get it to... I want to have some larger areas of the silver. Ah, that works. So by um, when you put your uh, pokey thing, whatever the pokey thing is, whether it's a pipe, popsicle stick or not, you turn it to the side, you'll get a wider band like that. And that works out pretty well. So. And less is more usually. So I'm trying to find the right time in which to stop. That looked like there was a hair in there or something. Yes! <laughs> Big old healthy one. Crap. All right. Sometimes you get that drag line look to it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add some silver right in that spot. I'm trying to break it up a little bit so it's not such a smooth drawn line. All right, let's see. Need some more right there. I think this stuff dries pretty quickly on the surface because it's almost rippling as if it's dried. All right, that was not a pretty line. Let's try that again. There we go. <laughs> Here 
I'm practically not breathing over here. All right, let me hit that with the heat gun real quick. Sorry, I wasn't doing a lot of talking there. I was concentrating. trying to be mindful of the heat when I was applying it to this I wanted to break it up so it's not looking like a solid blob it looks like a more of a broken up blob <laughs> but it looks a little bit more interesting that way but I wanted to also not heat up so much that it destroys any cells that are possibly developing all right let me bring you guys in for a close-up See how that silver is like right on the surface. Very interesting. Pretty cool. I think the silver was a good call. This is looking really interesting. It kind of reminds me of what they call it cloud cells or something like that. That's real popular right now with the acrylic pouring. Got a lot going on in there. This is going to look really interesting tomorrow. I, I don't know what it's going to do. All right. Until tomorrow. Later. All right, guys, this is the next day. It's cured. I'm going to have to play with this chrome more because it definitely brings in the wow factor. Combination with the diamond dust, there's, you know what? I don't normally do this, but I'm going to go outside because <laughs> I can't handle this. Hang on a second. Let me try and do this with the door and the phone and the dog. Come on, Zoe. Outside. Sweet, sweet. She's my shadow. She has to fall. Hi. Come on. You got a pack? Okay, get your ball. We're going outside. It's a pretty day. So I think we'll go over here where there's some sun. Because this is just ridiculous. <laughs> and I'm going to move this around a little bit just so you can see the sparkle. But that chrome and the sparkle and the shimmer. I mean, gee. Okay, beyond excited with this piece. Even this little blend here and getting the, those long striations in there. And I mean, you could see the sparkle and the depth of those cells. I was a little iffy about the piece, I have to admit, when I put it up. But getting it out the next day and it was Zowie. Okay. So hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell because you never know. Something like this could come up next. Later, y'all.